working. Oh, yay. Good morning, everybody. Bring yours in just a little bit. Okay. No, don't move your chair. Oh, darn it. There you okay. go. All right. Bring the microphone, the microphone, bring it in. Okay. There you go. See, you're getting the behind the scenes on Facebook Live this morning before the radio show. <laughs> okay, stand by. All right. Good morning, everybody. It is a wonderful Tuesday morning. My name is Nicole Mangina. I'm with Windermere Real Estate, and this is the 425 Show. <laughs> We're keeping it real. We have background music and everything today. <laughs> We have a super special guest. I am excited to announce um, Amy Wallen is here, the mayor of Kirkland. Good morning, Welcome. Nicole. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Talking Thank you. Kirkland stuff. I know. Let's do it. Yes, <laughs> let's do it. It's, um, well, you know, like I always say, it, buying and selling real estate, you know, when we start talking, whenever I meet with a client, we start with, okay, bedrooms, baths, square footage, and it quickly moves beyond that, right? Because if you're selling, it's you're selling the community, right? As much as the house, if not more. Um, and same with buying, right? It's if it was just about bedrooms and bath, people would buy the first house they see, and we all know that doesn't happen. Right. Um, I live in Kirkland, so I'm super excited to have you here today. Kirkland is I'm near and dear to my heart. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you have any problems you want me to try to fix? Parking tickets? No. Well, you, <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny you bring that up <laughs> because yesterday was the um, golf tournament for the police mm -hmm. department, and I sponsored a hole. My husband played. It's better that way. I sponsor the holes. He actually plays the golf because right. um, I'm not a very good golfer. But he did send me a picture of the sign so that I could save it just in case I ever <laughs> got a parking ticket or got pulled over. Maybe it does happen. I don't know. Maybe it gets me a warning. I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll report back. Hopefully, I just never get pulled that over. Was just a joke. <laughs> I can't really picture. I'll pay it for you though. <laughs> okay. No, it's all right. I got it. <laughs> if I earned it, I probably need to pay it. Um. So okay, all things Kirkland. Um. And. I, Kirkland, to me, is the ultimate community because we have that wonderful downtown area mm -hmm. um, that I just, I feel so lucky. I feel like I live in a resort town, yeah. right? We've got the Boulevard, the Cross Kirkland Corridor Trail, um, and we're going to talk about all kinds of things today. I know we were chatting a little bit before the radio show started about um, real estate and building, um, but it was interesting, something that came out last week that I thought was interesting to talk about today is, you know, the Puget Sound Business Journal. Mm -hmm. They just did their last Friday was the rankings of the wealthiest zip codes. Uh-oh. I know. Well, you know what's oh. funny is we were on we were on page two. Oh. <gasps> what? Um, you know, it's I think it's the top 50. And we, I want to say, I can't remember. I'm going to say we were like 28 or something like that. I would have thought we would have been in the top five. I would have too in this region. Mm -hmm. But you know what that tells me is... Um, it just shows how diverse Kirkland is. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that's got to make it interesting for you as mayor. We assume Kirkland's all like waterfront luxury homes and high rise, con or not high rise, but fancy condos. But it's, it's a very diverse community. It absolutely is in every way. <clears throat> Excuse me, culturally, um, um, wealth wise, we have one, we have a significant population of kids on free and reduced lunch. Yes. Um, we have a, a significant mom community by the hospital area that are, um, you know, immigrant families that are, I would say, struggling. We have yes. um, a church on 132nd that is hosting several uh, homeless families. They're women and children who live in their car. <clears throat> I feel like. It, you're right. We 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 should never lose sight of everyone in our community, right? Kirkland is not just about uh, the beautiful waterfront restaurants, our emerald necklace of parks that we're so famous for, where the region's backyard. But it's a diverse community full of people working really hard and trying to um, survive. So yeah, it's it's interesting. So we live in the Houghton neighborhood, just like you do. Mm -hmm. My son, our youngest one, is still in Lakeview Elementary. And I remember one day I was picking him up from school. And Lakeview, I mean, Houghton, it's a pretty yeah. fancy neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? I mean, houses go for a lot of money. But it just happened that I had to pick him up from school early. It was a Friday afternoon, and I watched the kids that had to come to the office to get their bag of food to make it through right. the weekend. Yep. And it broke my heart. Yep. Um, and just, you know, you get the emails about, hey, we need your help, you need to contribute. But to physically see those kids come and get it, it just really made me realize there's a lot there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of wonderful things in Kirkland um, but there's also a lot of opportunities for us to um, do things look talk about keeping it local right do things locally and, and help those kids out yep our, our families are working so hard you know 
Mm -hmm. So many times the Boys and Girls Club picks up the kids after school and yes. they go to those programs. Mm -hmm. We've got, you know, families working incredibly hard. There's some awesome programs in Kirkland that, you know, are funded by our neighbors for, just as you described, the, <clears throat> the weekend pantry packs, the, the, um, the hygiene drives, you know. These, yes. So Life Community Church does a program. There's a, a program called Nourishing Networks. So every spring break, every Thanksgiving break, we get together as a community and try to make sure that these kids that are on the free and reduced lunch and are mm -hmm. getting fed at school have food during the breaks. Yes. Um, so those are great programs to be involved in. For sure. Well, and the Boys and Girls Club is great too. I know you guys are really involved in it, in it um, through Ford of Kirkland. Um, we've been, my husband's been on the board for years and it's interesting, you know, when you run into people, you know, we're talking about people on free and reduced lunch, but even just everyday people. I remember talking to someone um, who's actually the manager of a Nordstrom's um, saying how much the uh, Boys and Girls Club meant to him in Kirkland because mm -hmm. he was a single dad and, you know, he manages Nordstrom's. He, he, obviously he can feed his kids. They're doing great, but he works retail hours and he needed a place to, for his kids to go after school because he couldn't be there at 3 or 3.30 whenever they got out of town. And just what it meant to his family, you know, his kids really enjoyed being there and the peace of mind that that gave him, knowing that they were in a safe environment and a positive environment, that that meant the world to him. Yeah, and they have done such a great job of bringing up the kids who have enjoyed the program all along. Yes. And they're now the mentors. So the ki it's sort of a mentorship program for kids where they end up admiring the leaders in their groups yes. and becoming those leaders themselves. And so it's parks and recs, it's it's mentoring, it's you know, it's it's a huge program. We're so lucky to have people involved in the Boys and Girls Club and there's another sort of nonprofit agency that needs our support and help. Mm -hmm. It does really take a village to raise kids. It's a big job. Does it ever? Yeah. <laughs> we, need we need a lot of help. We do. <laughs> I'm grateful for that whole, it takes a village every day. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's dive into to real estate a little bit and development. It's, uh, you know, Kirkland, you know, it's been developed for a long time, but there's so much new construction going on in Kirkland, right? And there's pros and cons to that. We talked about traffic has changed. Let's be real. Um, you know, and people might grumble about it, but the reality is, is we need the housing. Mm -hmm. People are coming in. Um, <clears throat> and the house prices are going up. So I'm curious, you know, from the being the mayor's standpoint and things like that, how does that play into with the planning and real estate and what, what's allowed, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, land use is a really big topic in local yes. government. So, I mean, I think it's important to um, recognize that our region has experienced unprecedented growth and that comes with yes. challenges. So our success is about our economic development, our incredible jobs. Um, all these tech companies giving great family wage, you know, providing great family wage jobs, opportunities for people. Mm -hmm. So people are moving from across the United States. We live in a free country and they're coming for work. Right. And so the Puget Sound Regional Council is um, a body that um, manages all the federal funding that comes into our region for okay. roads and transportation and infrastructure. And so uh, that agency projects that we're going to have a million more people in the Puget Sound in the next um, you know, 10 to 15 years. Okay. So our, so what happens is that every community is, is um, assigned a certain amount of homes and jobs that they need to plan for. Mm -hmm. So that is how we come up with our zoning. But, but we also do that in consultation with our neighbors. In Kirkland, we're very unique in that we have distinct neighborhoods that mm -hmm. you described. You lived in Houghton, right. Lakeview. These are specific neighborhoods and we plan for each of those neighborhoods. Um, the idea is that we are going to protect Eastern Washington from development so that for in posterity, we will all, us, our kids, will be able to go to Eastern Washington and be in the countryside, okay. be in Leavenworth, be in tiny towns. But the only way that we preserve Eastern Washington from development and sprawl is to take development in our urban centers. And Kirkland is an urban center. Okay. Or, you know, parts of Kirkland, like right. the downtown area is considered urban center. But technically, the Totem Lake is our urban center. So that's where you're seeing... I think a ton of redevelopment, uh, the village so of much. Totem Lake. We've got, I think, 35 ho units of housing in the pipeline. So I feel like we say we want to be a welcoming and inclusive community. That means we will take growth and we will welcome people into our town. Mm -hmm. So you are seeing changes and it's painful, um, but it's also necessary in our responsibility. It, it is necessary and I think you know, but there's a lot of wonderful things that go with that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, part of what makes downtown Kirkland so wonderful are the restaurants and the shops That's and the right. art galleries. 
you need people to support that. You can't right. have that with the absence of people, right. which means you, there's traffic, you know, it's just, it all goes together. Um, and I think Kirkland has done a great job with their redevelopment. That Juanita is a great example, right? And it's been a while since Juanita was redeveloped, but I remember, what was it? It was like a Safeway there or That's something right. with like a really yucky parking. It was, it was bad. <laughs> but these are the things that are struggles because look at Juanita now. It is it's gorgeous. A, it is its own vibrant community. Yep. And it's got the Juanita Beach Park. It has yes. services. People can live there without a car because there's transit. Right. I mean, that's the kind of planning that we want to do is concentrating, uh, creating these urban villages with a lot going on, with fun things, yes. to, a place to be where your kids are safe. Um, and then we get to, you know, not at, have a lot of open space too. So right. That balance of taking density where we want it to be and creating great diverse communities. I mean, we've got so much diversity in Kirkland now, um, culturally, language-wise. It's uh, you know a more interesting and fun place to live. It is. It's fascinating to walk the boulevard, right? Isn't it downtown Kirkland? Especially you walk through that Marina Park yep. on you know a Sunday afternoon, just to walk through the park and. Here Listen to how many different languages there are. Absolutely. From one end to the other. Fascinating. Yep. We're the region's backyard. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and then Totem Lake just makes me happy. Me too. Right? Every time I drive by it and I see those buildings, I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> the year I ran for office in 2009, the mall was totally dead. I would talk to people about what they wanted to see oh, for Kirkland. They'd say, bad. what about our mall? Our mall is dead. What are you going to do about it? Well... I mean, I would say I didn't do something, but I definitely helped. And yeah. the economy, that, that's what our yeah. expression was. It's the economy, stupid. The economy <laughs> happened, and now we have an amazing, and, and that is a product of great planning. I think you're going to see that is going to be an urban village. It's got, I think, 800 units of housing, a right. movie theater, a gym. You know, it's got Trader Joe's now, great restaurants yes. coming in, Whole Foods. It's I think exciting. Rack is Nordstrom there. Rack is there. Yeah. 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 So I, I, Services. Yes, things. those things make me happy. Yeah, me Just too. Just because they create vibrancy, they create life, they create interaction, yeah. right? Again, that's one of the things I love about Kirkland is you really feel like you get to know people yep. in your community because we are in an area where it's encour you're encouraged to be out and about, right? right? Right. Where we live, it's probably a mile and a half at most to downtown Kirkland. I can't tell you how many times now that the days are longer and the sun is out that we walk to lunch or dinner or something like that. And isn't it, I see so many people that I know. I'll yes. Be, it's a, got a, I mean, we say small town feel. There is a small town Absolutely. feel. It is the real thing. It is people awesome. You walk around town, you see people say, hey, Oh, hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you really it's, feel it's connected lovely. to people, which yeah. I absolutely love. And as a mom, when our, our boys were yeah. little, I loved it because, you know, there's so many days we're like, oh, my gosh, I have to get out of the house. But, like, getting in the car is just beyond my yep. capabilities. And I'd strap them into that stroller. Yeah. I'd bribe them with hot chocolates and cookies when we got downtown. <laughs> we could so go lucky. on our own little three-hour adventure, and everybody was much happier when we got home. That downtown Kirkland area is somewhere you can feel totally safe with your kids. Oh, always. Riding their bikes to town. Yes. To gelato. Yes. You know, it's not, wonderful. Not everybody has that. No. Yeah. Um, and we've got a lot of um, <clears throat> locally owned businesses, which I love as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Especially with the kids. Um, I always love the idea of shopping local. I do that whenever I can, right? For gifts or whatever. Um, but, it, you know, the kids go into the stores and they know the owners. And, right. Um, it just, it's, it's great. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I'm very proud of the downtown. I'm very proud of That's another thing. Yeah. That you create density and you welcome people into your community, but you still preserve what you love about it. So we yes. haven't, you know, over the, developed the downtown. We've kept yeah. It, it's charming self. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I actually think there is, I personally believe that there is, um, the, talking about the safety thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the whole safety in numbers, right? Mm -hmm. I remember it was a couple years ago. I was actually um, in a local city, but it's not super populated downtown and so I was, it was in the fall, so I was walking around. It was probably 7 or 8 o'clock at night. It's not super late, but it was dark outside. Mm -hmm. And I felt really uncomfortable because there was nobody else on the streets. Right. right. And then the next week, I went to New York City. I felt so I'm like, yes. It's like 11 o'clock at night. I'm walking around because mm -hmm. there's the whole safety in numbers, right? You yep. do the obvious of you skip the dark alleys. 
but the city's alive. Yeah, beyond that, yeah. it feels really good, mm -hmm. right, to be out doing things like that. So right. I don't think Kirkland's the next New York, but yeah. there's that whole safety and numbers. And then we've got the Kirkland Urban. Kirkland has a lot. <laughs> you must be busy. We have a lot going on. Kirkland's and got a lot going on because there's that Kirkland Urban downtown as yeah. well. And this is another um, project that's been years in the making. Mm -hmm. The community worked on long before I was even involved on the council. There was planning for this sort of old um, mall. It was, a, you know, it had a grocery store and some right. services, but it was an aging beauty. Right. And it served the community so well, so people were very in love with it, and they, you know, would say, don't touch our, you know, I, I love know. the Hoffman's Bakery. I love the Ricky Ricky restaurant. What are you going to do with those places? Purple was there. Yes. So, I mean, it's a painful process to turn this sure. over, but I do, I, I'm so, oh, we did a hard hat tour the other day. You are going to be so excited to see what happens there. Again, more units of housing. Um, uh, Tableau Software is going to mm -hmm. be there. Um, I believe the Shake Shack is going there. Rachel's Ginger Beer, oh, another fun. movie theater. They they're keeping it very secret, but yes. a lot of um, they've got a celebrity chef type restaurant oh, coming fancy. in. I know Kirkland's but going. They're big keeping time. us in suspense. So oh, I'm excited about it. And you know, I have to admit, I resist change as much as anybody. It's you know, hard. we all it's I don't know. It's like we're supposed to be okay with change, and the reality is, I'm kind of not. Um, no, it's, <laughs> I don't like it. Um, Me neither. But once it's there, just you like, know. you know, Totem Lake is a perfect, well, I was more than happy with that change. I was yeah. not at all attached to what we was there before. A, <laughs> we, I think the community was actually ready on yes, that one. more than ready. <laughs> but then something new comes in, you're like, oh, this is pretty cool, yeah. right? It's, and the park, Totem yes. Lake Park, it's got, we've yes. got a beautiful master plan. We're going to open up the park so that you can see that it's a real wetland. We're building a gorgeous boardwalk, walk around it. It'll connect to the Cross Kirkland Corridor, connect to the mall, connect to the hospital. Yes. It's a beautiful thing. I love that stuff. Yeah. That's great. I know. I'm such a fan of that Cross Kirkland Corridor. We have a dog, so, you know, I'm always walking the dog. And then the other day, a girlfriend of I um, went for a walk on it and kind of detoured and went to Jeru for lunch and walked Perfect. home. That's exactly great. what we hoped would happen. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> and it's getting busy, isn't it? It is. I knew it would this summertime. It's oh, it makes me happy. It's becoming known around the region, too, so people for sure. are coming to walk. And now, Bellevue, I mean, I'm very proud, and I'm just a little bit Kirkland-centric, but I'm very proud that we set the tone for the region because now yes. Bellevue has built theirs. Woodenville's working on theirs. Yeah, um, I think the so more the better. It goes all the way from, you know, Totem Lake to the Whole Foods in Bellevue. I, yes. yes. So one of my friends, actually, they rode their bikes down to the Whole Foods and mm -hmm. had lunch and came back. I think that's so fun. And me too. Yeah. Long overdue. Absolutely. Kids ride their bikes to school. Yeah, another safe stuff. way to get to school, mm -hmm. uh, apart from being on the streets. Yeah. yeah. So what's coming up in Kirkland? What are you guys working on? Well, we're working a lot on um, firearm safety. And as much oh, as, yes. a, as a local community can, mm -hmm. because the state preempts most of the lawmaking around firearm safety, but our okay. community has come to us, and, and they came to us and wanted us to do welcoming and inclusive work around um, making sure that our immigrants feel welcome, making sure that everyone in Kirkland is an essential person, mm -hmm. that we that part of the public safety piece is that um, undocumented people might not want to report crimes because they wouldn't feel safe that they would maybe oh, be reported they to were immigration. Yes. So we've done a lot of work around trying to make sure that people know that our city services are available to every person regardless of where they come from, regardless oh, of their immigration status. That's wonderful. The next wave of that is that our, our a similar group of people are coming forward and saying, how are you going to make sure there's no school shootings in Kirkland? And we have some plans around that. There's, as I said, a lot of that is controlled by the state, but we have some plans around what we can do in Kirkland to encourage people to store their weapons safely, to, um, to an education campaign about how we can have mental health counselors in the schools, okay. school, school resource officers in the schools. So I'm, I'm really proud of Kirkland. I think we're very progressive, and we take the difficult issues that are facing our towns around the United States. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's great. If someone wanted to get involved in that or participate in any way, what yes. are what are some ways that they could do that? Yep. Well, there's. you can go to our website. It's okay. uh, kirklandwa.gov, and you'll see a button about um, this uh, public safety initiative. But you'll also, there's some groups that I could connect people with, and I'd be happy to provide my okay. email and my cell number. Perfect. Um, 
but there's a group called Kirkland Safe, and there's another one called Indivisible Kirkland. You can find them on Facebook. You can find okay. them on the web. On the, on, web, on the web. On yeah, <laughs> you can Google search them, and they will come up. Awesome. And I'd be happy to uh, to connect people. You can find my email and my cell number on the city's website as well. Perfect. And we'll get it on our website as well. Okay, Nicole great. Mangina um, forward slash NicoleMangina.com forward slash uh, podcast, and we'll have that link on there too. Great. So we'll make sure great. we get I'd people love to, the more, connected the more with you. Involved, the better. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking a lot about Kirkland, yeah. um, but you've got some other exciting things coming up too, right? Well, I personally am uh, running for the legislature, so I'm running for the 48th District House of Representatives, which is that's exciting. parts of Kirkland, Redmond, parts of Bellevue, and the Points communities. So okay. that's my new adventure. Awesome. I love my job, though. I have the very best job in the world, Mayor of Kirkland. You do. We're going to make you do both, because <laughs> I, I know you have time for all this. <laughs> You don't, but <laughs> well, I'm, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to do it, and I'm. It's just been the joy of my life, to be honest with you. I yeah, mean, it is a huge honor. It's yeah. yeah. Well, we are super and grateful. To put myself on the ballot again. It seems kind of crazy, but you know, you got to do it. You got to do the things you believe in. And I really think it's time for me to go. I yeah. want to work on this firearm safety at the state level. Yeah, it's I think time. that's it's a it's a hot topic, yep. right? It is definitely something that needs to be addressed. Right. That is for we sure. We can do better. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, and I'm looking at our little Facebook Live thing. Um, neither one of us can, and it, we always say this, but we can't. We can't I see glasses. it. I, know, I can't see it either. <laughs> but if you have questions for the mayor, post it in the comments, um, and we will make sure we get those questions to Amy so that she can answer them <laughs> when we. Um, it's in a font size we can see. <laughs> I can't see it either. <laughs> Um, what are some other things going on at the state level um, that you're excited to work on? Well, affordable housing. Yes. So we just, you know, we've talked about housing a lot. Yes. We have to build more housing, but we also have to um, create incentives. I think that we can help local governments Got um, do this work by, um, at the state level, creating incentives. There's some communities that don't want to grow. They don't right. want change. They don't, you know, and you've got city councils, you know, sort of wrestling with, their obligation under the state law to take um, to take growth and density and to um, provide for jobs, and then you've got other communities that um, you know want to grow more than they're really supposed to because they're more yes. of a, of um, a rural type setting. City. Okay. So I, I feel like there's work to be done to kind of fine tune that, and for I think sure. you know you have the local government experience. It's it's helpful. Land use is one of the most difficult things we do. I, I'm sure. Changing people's neighborhoods. Yes. Yeah. Well, and admittedly, I mean, mm -hmm. we've lived in our neighborhood for 14 years now, so it's changed, mm -hmm. right? You buy it one thinking you're in one thing, and it changes. But, that's right. Um, I don't know. It's, it's part of it. I, to me, that's fascinating. I actually didn't realize that the state kind of has a say in mm -hmm. each community and how much housing mm -hmm. they're expected to add. So that's interesting to me. Right. So what else at the state level? I think that, you know, my, my own personal view is that we've had a lot of um, prosperity in this region, mm -hmm. and but we've got working families that are really struggling, that mm -hmm. can't afford to live in communities where they work. So right. they're stuck on the 405 or other highways. Yes. Not enough transit to get them there. Yes. And then, you know, you spend an hour in each way in the car mm -hmm. on the way to work. Your kids are what doing what? Maybe not good things, right? right? <laughs> Probably <laughs> Perhaps not. Perhaps not. And then your kids are not doing homework. That's, that's for right, sure. Right, we know that. So you know, just life is hard for working families. We yes. need to do. I think we can do better. And on our tax system is kind of set up that sales tax, property taxes, all that kind of rules to to burden working families and make their lives expensive. And I I really like to see the state do something a little bit more progressive around taxes. I think we. I think again, it's time for us to do to do better. We, you know, we've found that we're not fully funding education. Right. Um, I think any of us who have kids in the districts mm -hmm. know that there are services missing. That there's, you know, kids that need more help, and our our schools need our support. So yeah, our teachers have a lot of responsibility already. They when we drop off our little darlings. To they them. do, <laughs> and it's it's fascinating. I mean, I I'm so grateful to our teachers. Right. Me too. I think they do a phenomenal job. Yep. With the resources given. Right. Right. They figure out how to maximize all of that to the nth degree. So I have nothing but the deepest gratitude for everybody involved in our education system. Right. Um, but it is interesting. Our youngest son has dyslexia. Mm-hmm. 
right? And so learning to navigate that yes. in a public school system, you know, right. is an interesting and experience. And that's where we found the gaps. Well, not yeah. only that, I think we need to make sure that being a, I mean, in an ideal world, Amy's queen for a day, mm -hmm. the teacher is the most, is a, a yes. trusted public servant, and that for is sure. the, a job that is highly paid yes. and, and something to strive for, to be entrusted with a community's children. Yes. And I don't think we see, it, we're not sort of treating our teachers that way. Right. Like, as yet. But I think the, the big gap we're seeing is in the special needs mm -hmm. in the, my my nephew is we're guardians for my nephew he's a type 1 diabetic you know oh, the school sure. nurse oh, relationship is very important right for our family <laughs> and those are the those are the the groups that I think we need to shore up our schools with you know, yes the the extra services right the teacher pay and extra services that you know to support the teachers who who are you know struggling to deal with large classrooms of kids with all different kinds of abilities. It is, yes, it is. They've got a lot on their plate, yep. for sure. Um, although, I, my and our experiences have, have been great, right? We've had really good experiences with the teachers. You know, there's been a couple that have really impacted our boys in mm -hmm. really wonderful ways, and right. that's been awesome. Yep, you definitely remember those teachers that made a difference in your life. I still do. Oh, for sure. Yeah, Mrs. Jamison, 10th grade. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Mrs. Jim. Oh, I love it. <laughs> she made me read Thomas Hardy. Who would have thought? That there changed you my go. life. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. When stuff like it's that happens. Things. Yeah, she yeah. believed in me. I, uh, yes. yes. That mm -hmm. makes and I you know, I think one of the things that schools do do a great job of, um, and I think it's just society in general is uh things are just so inclusive anymore. Right. You know, whether it's dyslexia or a food allergy or, you know, a medical something. Uh, you know, the kids, they're so funny. They don't know anything's different anymore. Oh, my gosh. I saw this amazing thing about filling each other's buckets. That's what the kids talk about. If you yes, have a tough the bucket day, filler. There's a bucket filler award at Lakeview. Someone will fill your bucket yes. and make you feel better. I thought, oh. Sometimes I need my buckets to be filled too. Know. We need an adult <laughs> bucket filler. Yes, we do. <laughs> and they have this sort of problem-solving rubric where they have to, you know, here's a problem, and it's a wheel of choices. What would you do? Yes. If someone's not playing with you, you could play a different game. You could do this. You could do, you know, all these, and helping them solve problems. Which yes. I feel those are very clever things that are being offered to our it's, kids. It's interesting. Yeah, we're preparing them for life better. I yeah. Think. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here today, Amy. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, I know I've been calling you Amy, but I feel like I'm supposed to be calling you Mayor. No, I think Amy's Just, good. This is Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> kind of fancy. <laughs> like, well, pals. <laughs> well, I think you're going to be my bucket filler now. I will now absolutely be your bucket filler <laughs> anytime. You just send me a note. Nicole, fill me up awesome. Because <laughs> you are. Thank you. Thank you for all that you are doing for the Kirkland community. I am very excited for you and your. Um, race for the legislature i'll certainly be out there campaigning for you because I, I think that. that would be awesome thank you so much yeah thanks again thanks for being here everybody this is the 425 show and we will see you next week bye bye oh all clear ladies yay oh, but not until nice we job. Oh.